to better understand the method, let's do the example of calculation together. For my students, the exercise can be referred to problem 3.10.1 in the Highway Engineering Notes. First, like I said, every time, read the question carefully. Okay, let's have a look on the detail figures and tables given for the problem. In this slide, we have a table consists of the FDT data measured on site. In this table, we have all the information including the mass of sand in cone and the bulk density of sand used for the FDT with known density. Maximum dry density will be determined from the laboratory compaction data. Therefore, the calculation will focus on the parameters highlighted in red. And at the end of the calculation, we will determine the degree of compaction for the road base layer. Okay, next, uh, this is the laboratory compaction data for crush aggregate used for the road base layer. The given values are moisture content and bulk density for five samples. And here, the chart is used for plotting the dry density versus moisture content. This is actually similar to what we have discussed before in chapter one of your notes. So using the data given, let's try this example. This is the overview of the question. Just now, what exactly our target of the question? We want to determine the DOC for the compacted root base layer. This is to evaluate whether the layer is properly compacted by the contractor. From the specification of the root base layer, the target compaction level is 95%. From the question, two sets of data given which are those collected from the site and those collected from the laboratory compaction. Okay, first have a look on the table for the laboratory compaction data. In the first step, using the formula given, the dry density is calculated for all the five samples as shown in the slide. Then, refer to the chart. Plot the dry density versus moisture content and determine the peak of dry density or maximum dry density. From the plot, the maximum dry density value is then taken at 2.175. Next, we have a look on the table for the sand cone. This table provides us with the data collected from the excavated hole. Let's have a look on the data together. D is the mass of moist soil from the hole. Next, E, mass of sand plus cylinder before pouring, M4. Then F, mass of sand plus cylinder after pouring, M5. And then the soil excavated from the hole need to be determined for moisture content where a portion of the soil sample is taken and dried in the oven. So we have I refer to the mass of container, J mass of container plus moist soil, K mass of container plus dry soil. Okay, now refer to the example of the calculation for change 1750L. Refer to the change 1750L. Let's continue with step number 3. The calculation of mass of sand in hole MB is equivalent to 2660 gram. Then, calculate the bulk density of soil using the given formula in the slide and you will get the value is 2.1. Please double check the calculation while listening to this video. And then step 4 is to calculate the moisture content and for the change 1750L, the moisture content 
is 3.2%. And then the dry density of the soil is 2.035. Finally, by taking the ratio of the dry density and maximum dry density, the level of compaction is obtained at 93.6%, which is in this case the value less than the target compaction of 95%. And of course, the results is not comply with the standard from Public Works Department. Again, please do your own calculation to verify the values. And then, using the same calculation, calculate for the other change. So, what's the results? Okay, from the slide, as you can see, for 1250R, the DOC is 97%, which is complied with the standard. And then 750L also comply with the standard because it's more than 95%. And finally, 9800C also comply with the standards. So basically, the contractor needs to apply more compaction effort for change 1750L in order to improve the compaction level to 95% as recommended by the Public Works Department specification. Okay, again, please spend some time to do your own calculation to verify the values. Next, we have another method to determine the soil density. It's a rubber balloon method. In comparison to the sand cone that used sand to fill up the hole, this method uses water, where the volume of the water that fills up the hole is considered equivalent to the volume of soil. As you can see from the figure, the photo shows the balloon density meter and the schematic drawing of the principal use of this method. The whole process is similar to the sand cone from the excavated soil until the determination of the soil moisture content. The water within the rubber membrane is pumped into the excavated hole and the volume of water is then taken as the volume of soil for further calculation. So here, I've attached a video for reference on the rubber balloon methods conducted on site and credits, of course, goes to the YouTube video with the link provided. It should be noted that... This video demonstrates the proper procedure for conducting a soil density test using the rubber balloon method. The selected test site should be smooth, level, and somewhat larger than the volume measuring device base plate. A level surface aids in the test accuracy because two volume measure readings are taken at each test site. A dozer or other construction equipment may be used to remove the top portion of the subgrade to ensure a representative test site. Place the base plate over the smooth area and securely fasten it down with the pins included in the compaction kit. The base plate must stay in place throughout the field test. Place the volume measure on the base plate for the initial reading. Once the device is in place, using the bulb type pump and while holding down the volume measure, force the water down into the balloon until resistance is felt. Apply the calibrated pressure and note the reading on the glass cylinder. After the reading is noted, reverse the bulb type pump in the quick coupler and pump the water back up into the graduated glass cylinder. Record the reading. This is your initial reading. The next step in the rubber balloon test procedure is to dig a hole with a soil auger, trowel, or other tools. The hole must be 4 inches in diameter and approximately 5 to 6 inches deep to get required amount of soil needed for the test. Exercise care in digging the test hole so that soil around the top edge of the hole is not disturbed. As demonstrated here, a hole is being dug with an auger. 
An auger makes it much easier to dig through the compacted soil. Depth markings on the auger, such as shown here, help to ensure the proper depth is reached. Place all of the loose material from the hole into a moisture-tight container. The soil removed from the test hole will be used for weight and moisture content determinations. Be careful not to lose any material. All material from the test hole must remain within the vertical sides of the base plate. Clean the sides and bottom of the hole. Check to be certain that no jagged edges or points remain that may puncture the balloon. With the use of a brush, sweep all fines remaining on the base plate into the hole. Remove the material brushed into the hole and place it in the container with the rest of the soil. Wind and sun can quickly draw moisture out of the soil removed from the test hole. Therefore, a cover should be placed on the sample container before proceeding with the rest of the test. Place the volume measure back on the base plate in the same initial position. While holding down the device, pump the balloon down into the hole and apply the calibrated pressure. Lightly tap the gauge to help stabilize the reading. Once the final reading is noted, reverse the bulb type pump in the quick coupler and pump the water back up into the graduated glass cylinder. Record the final reading. Generally, earth moving equipment is working near the test site. For safety reasons, it may be beneficial to move to a safer location before completing the final steps of the test as well as final calculations.